Today I got a review on an LED light bulb for you, but this is not just the little cheap $5 one you find at Walmart. This was supplied to me by Sansi. They sent me a four pack of these actually. Here's the other three. Um, SansiLED.com, actually off of Amazon, but the light bulb is here. That thing is freaking big. It's like a donut inside there. And I definitely say it's at least a pound. There's got to be a heck of a heat sink inside of here. And the ratings on these, it is an A21 LED bulb. Uh, input voltage 120 volts AC, 60 hertz. 18 watts power, which is the equivalency of 150 watts of incandescent bulb. Um, luminous flux, 2000 lumens. And color temperature is 5000. These are not dimmable. It says on the box, CRI, the uh, color rendering index, is 80 on these bulbs. Uh, the base is an E26, normal North American base. I'm not sure if anyone else uses it in the world. I know a lot of the European countries have a different style connector, so it won't work on them. And it also has on the bottom here, forbidden to use an enclosed luminaire or enclosure. Chances are the heat sink in this probably puts out a little bit of heat and you don't want to overheat the bulb. So... If we look at the bulb, basically, it's got this big round donut, and that's where all, all the LEDs are actually housed. We'll try it out here in one minute. You can see there's a big space inside here, and it looks like all the wires run through like one little channel. And the regular base and a green bottom. Like I said, it's got some heft to it. Model 18 watt, 5000K, 2000 lumens, AC, dead. Just a regular little tiny print here. We'll see that when we do the teardown. But for right now, Let's compare it to, I have some other LED bulbs, uh, not rated for 150 watt equivalent, I think they're rated for like 60 or 80, in my overhead fan light thing in the living room. So let's move the camera over there, and I'll take one of those out and plug this in and just see really how good it is. Okay, so I got the new bulb right here. Chances are my face is going to get washed out because I have the exposure locked on my camera right now, so this way we can actually see the difference from the actual camera and it won't compensate when I put this bulb in. So I got three of these LEDs in here. I take this one out that faces towards the kitchen. And just for comparison, these are rated dun, 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 high power factor, good. 9.9 .9 watts, and these are 18, so this is just a little more than half of what this is gonna put out. And these are 2700K. These are warm white, whereas this is a 5000K. This is daylight as well, so keep that in mind. And this is rated for 800 lumens. This is rated for 2000. So, granted, this is definitely going to be a lot brighter, but... Wow. Yes, I've already tried it. Okay, here we go. I don't want to look directly at it because, yes. Yeah, Check that out. Yeah, it's definitely a 5000K. And it, yeah, it's definitely a 5000K and it's really freaking bright. And that's just one of these bulbs. If I put all three in here, it would probably hurt our eyes. We couldn't even hang out here. This is definitely great for something that faces directly up. If I was in the kitchen and everything, I mean, I can actually see it's not the kitchen great now. But if I was. Looking directly at that, that actually hurts the eyes because it's that freaking bright. You definitely want it in like a table lamp that shoots upwards. But the, let me get on the other side of this. Yeah, it definitely disperses the light very well. There is no hot spots in the white area, in the donut area. And I don't really feel any massive amounts of heat coming out of it. The donut is warming up a little bit, but then again, it's using a half decent amount of power too. 18 watts. Yeah, now I can start feeling a little bit of heat coming off of it. So that's probably why they don't want it in an enclosure because they don't want the overheat type of deal. It needs to be in open air. Whereas these, the base gets a little bit warm, but then again, these are only pulling nine watts, not 18. So, it's... so yeah, I would definitely recommend these for something that shoots light up or indirect lighting versus something downward like this, because it's going to blind your eyes. It's really bright. But if you really want to light up a room, yeah, the 150 watt equivalent will definitely do it. Okay, so you get it. It's freaking bright. It works good, 
Now let's tear into it and actually see how good the build quality is. Granted, it feels like it's got plenty of weight to it, but let's make sure the wires are connected right. The little circuit board inside here that drops the voltage from 115 volts down to, I want to guess around 30. Let's find out what voltage these LEDs run at as well. So let's do a bit of a tear down and see what we can do with it. Okay, so first off, to try to open this, it looks like we got a this translucent clear bridge that runs around it, and it looks like there's some sort of clip. So let's see if we can pop off this top first. Oh, almost. There we go. Wow, okay. That definitely shows a lot of LEDs there. And looks like the uh, soldering job is really good. It's actually reflowed with extra going over the traces. And it feels like it's a ceramic. So that probably adds to some of the weight right there. That's your two incoming wires. Let me see if I can get something that I can get power with here on the bench and we'll see how much power is actually coming through here. There we go. That's good enough. I got most of it taped off now so I can actually see what we're doing here. <sighs> now if I can just stop seeing spots. Okay, what voltage are these LED strings running at? Looks like about 40 volts. Is there an AC compa AC component to this or no? Not that I can really tell. It's probably not filtered that well. But it's got to be filtered enough because there is no flicker, at least not visible to me. But it looks like they're running about 40 volts for it. 58. Oh, sorry. Okay, 58 volts. Sorry, I still got spots in my eye. So, cool. 58 volts for these strings. So this is a... Okay, so this whole thing's ceramic. Yeah, this whole thing right here is ceramic that it's holding on to, so... Next step is probably to unsolder these wires and uh, see how I get to the next part of there. Okay, I got it apart. I tried turning my uh, soldering iron all the way up to 450 degrees Celsius and it really got this whole thing hot. It's still pretty freaking warm, but it couldn't get it hot enough to actually get the solder to fully melt and take the wires off. So I ended up cutting off the wires. This whole thing is one big piece of ceramic with the traces laid down on it for it. So I guess this also acts as a heat sink too. That's where most of the weight of this unit comes from. Yeah, this is actually ha slightly heavier than the whole rest of the unit. Now, two wires come right through this little channel and that's where it gets its power from. So next, let's see if we can get this translucent piece off. And it looks like it's got some sort of clip hold down here. And this should get us to the circuit board. Yep, there goes one. Two clips. I do have to say the build quality is really good so far. And also to note, if you remember looking at my uh, LED floodlight, they had bad solder joints right where it connected to the circuit board. These solder joints are really good. There's no chance of those wires falling off and all these LEDs are soldered on really well too. So like I said, it has a really good build quality so far. Come on. Held by one clip. There we go. And we got everything now. Here's the power supply. Let's see if I can get out of here. I'd care less if I destroy it now. So it's held by one wire. One or two wires that go to the actual base itself here. I wonder if I wonder if I can pop that out. I don't think that's a pop out. No, it's not. I think I'm just gonna have to twist the hell out of it until it comes out. Oh, there we go. There goes one wire. Come on, twist off. Break off. There we go. Okay, so now it's off the base. It is destroyed. So that's good. Now on their first looking here, check this out. They actually have the whole thing conformally coated. Actually, almost fully conformally coated, but not bad. So we have, let's see here, AC input, a fuse. I assume this is probably going to be a fuse, one of those little box ones. Yeah, I can't get 
that conformal coating is really thick on here. But here, let's zoom in here just a little bit and get some focus. And focus on up here. There we go. Okay, so we got our AC coming on in. Usually these little blocks are little fuses. And you got an initial coil. Four pins, that's a bridge rectifier right here. They have each part separated, so you got a regular bridge rectifier. Um, another inductor. Let's see here, there's an 8-pin chip underneath here for this heat sink, which is probably your voltage regulator. Transformer. And output capacitors, I assume. Two fairly good sized ones. And then a secondary capacitor here, which... 80 volts, 68 microfarads. And let's see if I can try to rip these ones on up here and get something off of them. Hey, they're green. That's all I can tell right now. Come on. There we go. We got something. Can't even tell what brand name it is. Ayashi. Still can't get a rating on these. I'm going to assume these are probably, or guess, probably like 440 fair microfarads or something like that. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Nope, these are the high voltage side. Okay, these are the high voltage caps. 400 volts, 22 microfarads. So it's got two of these. So that's the high voltage side for filtering. And then the low side is done by an 80 volt, 68 microfarad. So not bad build. It's got a little heat sink on this 8 pin. Let me see if I can... Yeah, I can pry that up. Okay, so there was some thermal compound on there as well. Let's see if I can clean it off a little bit. I think we can read this. Okay, I was able to clean it off a little bit more. It actually reads, I'm going to get my little screwdriver here, BP9927G. And the closest thing I can find here is on yoicart.com. And this one's a D, not a G, but they're basically the same thing. It's, oh wait, well it says D on here, but the description says G. It's a DIP-8 short circuit protection LED constant current driver IC overheat regulating genuine authentic. So that is a constant current LED driver, which they're using to run it. Unfortunately, when I go to the description, yeah, I can't read that. Forget that. But it has a constant current driver in there. And that's why there's probably no flickering. And it runs this really well. So there's a teardown. I definitely say this is a very good quality unit. I was not expecting it to be potted whatsoever. Apparently there's some resistors. Resistors underneath here or capacitors. I can't tell because it's all potted. Something else. Probably a diode. More than likely a blocking diode. But it's built really well. And here's another piece. And here's another piece. So if you want any more information on these lights, I will put them down in the description. Where I got them from Amazon. Who sponsored them. Namely, Sansi sponsored this uh, little review and teardown. That is not part of it. There we go. There's the four pieces to it. But...